I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell the chain is you're going to have a cat by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the knife. So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. got a video demonstrating inter-observer agreement. And of course, we're going to do it in typical Sitecore style. One of the things that you'll need to know is that we have broken this video up into 30 second intervals. Those 30 second intervals are where we're going to count um, our, our behaviors within. So uh, with that said, uh, pay attention. We got Brad recording some here and we got Ryan recording some here and you will see how it all works. All we're going to do is put a tick mark for each time we hear the word meow and then we're going to start looking at how well Brad and I agree. So with that said, watch, have fun. <laughs> There you are, might as well come and join you. Anyway, so we've been doing all sorts of stuff, uh, but I figure it's time to talk about the, uh, what is, shall we say, um, measuring behavior, right? There's lots of behavior that we can measure, meow, uh, but ultimately speaking, there's ways that we have to think about measuring behavior. So when we think about, initially about measuring behavior, you wanna think about three things. Repeatability, right? These are the dimensions that we're gonna worry about. So repeatability, okay, I don't know if I can say that again, repeatability, repeatability, meow. Um, we can then think about temporal extent, all right? Um, and then we can also think about temporal locus, okay? So extent, repeatability, pretty obvious. Temporal extent, how long does this go on in time, right? Um, the extent, and then um, temporal locus, location, where are we at? And I'm sure by now you guys have figured out where we're at. We do a lot of recording in Spokane for now. Um, so it's kind of fun, but hey, they got all these really cool things to worry about. So meow, let's take a look at some of the behavior that we can work with because we're really talking about measuring behavior, right? So we can dance around like this and do all sorts of things. That really has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I just figured I would because it sounded kind of fun, meow. Um, ultimately, meow, we have to think about that how we're going to do the measuring meow. Number one is count, right? How often, meow, does the behavior happen, meow? Uh, that is a very, very basic one. One that's more important to us is often rate or frequency. Um, they're different, but we're not gonna really differentiate right now, okay? So rate frequency, we're just gonna, it's a count over time, meow. Um, the next thing that we wanna think about is duration, meow. How long is meow a behavior going on for? Um, it could be going on for a long time. That's our duration. Uh, inner response time, meow, uh, meow, meow, I mean meow. When inner response time is the time between the responses, meow, um, which is something that we often worry about, uh, about the frequency and over time, which also gets us to that inner, the IRT stuff. Um, folks, I'm hesitating a little bit right now, meow, because I want you to understand, meow, that um, there's an entire set of videos just on this. So please go watch our other videos on each one of these topics. We have some great examples that go along with them. Uh, we got some other things here that we need to think about when we're talking about measurement. We also want to focus on, uh, uh, let's see, magnitude. We could measure how intense, meow, the response is, meow. Um, so we have that sort of responding along with it. The inner response time, magnitude, uh, duration, count, frequency, Brad, am I missing anything else? Latency. Latency is the time from the stimulus till the time, or sorry, another thing that we can measure uh, about behavior is the latency of the response, right? So how long it takes the response to occur from the time that the prompt happens. So you know, if Brad says, hey Ryan, start a video, and I go like this. Oh, now it's time to start a video. That's kind of a fairly long latency. Or if Brad says, Hey, Ryan, start a video. I go right now, I start getting into my videos and blah, 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 and I start doing my lecture. See the difference there, response latency. So again, folks, watch our other videos on these. They're much more in depth, uh, the little uh, Penny Packer Pedance videos. Um, and remember that we work as a team, Meow, and Meow, and you're eventually going to realize, Meow, that what we're doing with this video is also setting up some other Meow videos. And hopefully we can even start Meow breaking this down into Meow, something that you will be able to have some fun with for inner observer um, agreement stuff. All right, so anyway, more on all that stuff later. I'm gonna go play on some blocks. Bye. All right, because we're working with event recording here, we can look at three different types of inter-observer agreement. Number one is total count inter-observer agreement. This is where we're just gonna look at the total, the um, uh, uh, independent of the intervals. So we're gonna take the smallest number, div uh, like Brad's or mine, and divide it by the largest number. And that's going to give us a figure. It sucks, but it's going to give us a figure. The other thing we're going to do is mean count per interval, where we're going to take interval one and take the lowest number divided by the highest number. So if I'm lower than Brad, then we're going to take mine divided by Brad's score, or vice versa. 
then we're going to get a percentage for that. And we're going to write that for each interval. Then we're going to take an average of all of those intervals. How do you do that? You add up each interval, right? So the percentage that you got um, between each interval, so the first one, the second one, the third one, we got eight intervals here. So we're going to add all those up and then we're going to divide them by the total number of intervals. That's going to give us an average amount of agreement. So in other words, we're saying a mean count per interval, right? The next one is exact count per, vendor, per interval. And this one is where we're only going to say we agree if, or we're only going to count that interval if we actually agree. So then we're going to look at the total number of intervals where Brad and I agree, and then we're going to divide that by the total number of intervals available. As you can see, based on the type of inner observer agreement that you choose, you're going to get completely different accounts of that agreement. So if we were on total account, which by the way is the worst one that you can do. So but on total count, we had 88. Um, on mean count per interval, we had 86. And then of course on the exact count, we had 50. So Overall, not too bad, right? Exact count is clearly more strict than any of the others, and total count is the weakest. And let me give you an example why we really, really, really don't like total count. Imagine if I had 23 observations of Meow in the first interval. In the remaining seven intervals, I had zero. And then imagine if Brad had zero for the first seven intervals, and in the eighth interval, he had 26. We would still have the exact same number. We would still have 88% inter-observer agreement, but we never saw the behavior happen at all at the same time. And in fact, there's no overlap whatsoever. It would be horrific, but the inter-observer agreement number would give us 88. This is also an example of why we can't call this inter-rater reliability, because it's not a measure of reliability. It's really a measure of believability. How believable is the data? So a lot of times we like to report multiple. You choose one, but you, you know, you can, you kind of want to analyze as many as possible to figure out which one best represents your data. Of course, exact is going to be hyper strict. Um, the mean count per interval in this one, I like. I, so if I was trying to present this data, I would say, you know, I'm going to choose mean count per interval because I like that one, but I'll probably put the exact count up as well, just to let people know there was some variation. I mean, those meows were coming fast in a couple of those intervals. And uh, for the record, by the way, folks, Neither one of us got the correct number according to these observations. I'll let you guys figure out what it was and argue in the comments, but I can tell you for sure that there is not um, 26 uh, meows in the video.